Y'all, if you can hear clattering in the background, it's because every time I film, my husband feels it's the perfect opportunity to go in the kitchen and clatter around. But I can hear everything, so that might mean you can hear everything, and I apologize. <laughs> Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany, welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Breeds. I have some unboxings for you today and I'm actually kind of doing two videos in one. So typically when I receive my subscription from Authentic Books, I go ahead and do a separate video for that. However, I've come to find out that those boxes are almost always pretty much the same and I don't feel that they are worthy of a separate video anymore. In fact, I don't think I'm going to be continuing with my subscription of that service. So I do have February's box here today and then next month I will have March's to unbox for you and then I'm going to go ahead and cancel that subscription. So because of that, I didn't feel the need to do an entirely separate video, but we're going to go ahead and talk about the box, what's in it, and the book that I selected. And then last month, I did kind of a battle of the book boxes between Book of the Month and Aardvark Book Club. In that video, I went really in depth about the services of each and the positives and the negatives and things like that. So you can make your own decision about which one to try, maybe both, maybe none. And because I'm not going to be going into so much detail about the boxes themselves, I wanted to go ahead and just do my unboxings together in one video. Now, typically when I get my Book of the Month books, I don't even do unboxings on this channel. They're just included in my hauls at the end of the month but because I'm kind of comparing the two boxes I wanted to go ahead and include both book of the month and aardvark I will talk about all of the selections that each one had for March what my thoughts were on them what I chose etc I was also hoping to have a fairy loot adult only box for you today however I still have not received fairy loot's February box it didn't even ship until the first week of March and the tracking has only just now updated and I'm not even going to be getting that until the 23rd of March and they're about to start shipping the March books so that was supposed to be included here I thought I had plenty of time to go ahead and at least receive that February box but Alas, March 19th is not enough time for a February box. So that's just me being salty. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and start with the Authentic Books box and we'll jump into Book of the Month and Aardvark. All right, so if you haven't watched any of my other unboxings of Authentic Books, one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and try the subscription is, first of all, because you get to select the book that you want in your box. So it's not a surprise. So you always know that you're going to want to read what is in your box. But also, the items in the box are dedicated to self-care and your five senses. And so you're really going to be able to use everything that you get in the box, which is important to me because I hate boxes that just send you kind of junk, just like tchotchkes that are just going to clutter up your home. I hate that and they're usually not even great quality. So those two things intrigued me about this box. However, even though I love the concept of this box overall and I definitely love that some of the proceeds goes to children's educational funds, I'm just kind of bored with the items that I'm getting so far. There's not enough variety in the types of products and the brands of products used for me to want to go ahead and continue. Like I don't need this many candles sent to me. There's a candle in every single box and I'm not even that impressed with the candles that I received in terms of their scents. The candles are always by authentic books themselves and the coffees are usually always by authentic books themselves and it's just it's just not enough variety so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it for now and as they get bigger they're still a relatively small company like as they get bigger and kind of widen their selections I will absolutely consider going back to them in the future right now I feel like there are other subscriptions that I would rather try and see what I think of them rather than getting the same things over and over and over so I do have one more box coming to me it is the March box it'll be here at some point in April I will do an unboxing of that and then we will be done with authentic for the time being but for now let's go ahead and get into the items. As always, I'm going to start with the candle, which like I said, comes in every single box. This one is Red Bottoms, which of course is inspired by the book that I selected. And I'll go ahead and say it was Someone Else's Shoes by Dejah Moyes, which is one of my anticipated releases for the year. The scent profile on this is supposed to be Cashmere Musk and Golden Amber. So those are two things that I typically love in candles. So let's see. All right, here is the candle. Here's what it looks like. Okay, so this scent is wonderful, but as I've kind of mentioned in other unboxings, it's too light. Like I can barely smell it. What I do smell is fantastic, but like I'm just barely, barely, barely getting a whiff of this. And if you are very sensitive to scents, this might be right up your alley, but this also, because there's such a light scent, it doesn't really scent my home. No, like I can't even tell that it's burning because I can't smell it because it's so light. But I just, I love the scent overall. I just wish it was stronger. Like I said, they send one of these in every single box. It is from Authentic Books themselves. It is for the smell scents. And I just believe that there are a lot of other things that they can do to kind of branch out with regard to what they put in the box. I don't need this many candles. I don't go through this many candles and the scents are just not super impressive to me. Every box also comes with a bookmark inspired by the book. It says strength is turning up every day to a situation that is intolerable, unbearable even just to support the people that you love. So I think that is cute touch that they put in a box. Then for one of the touch items, I have another mask. It is another face story mask. It is moon velvet. It is a creamy face mask. Again, this is not the first face story mask that we've gotten. We've gotten a 
mask in almost every single box. I don't love masks. I don't use masks all that often and I definitely don't love single use masks. So I've actually been kind of saving these up so I can do little gift bags for my coworkers on their birthdays and Christmas and things like that. But this again, it's just, it's another one that we've continuously gotten in the boxes. So it's not that impressive to me. And then of course the coffee again from Authentic Books, it is Sunday mornings, white chocolate truffle. The flavors that they have, you know, are very interesting, but when it comes down to it, when I'm actually tasting the coffee and I'm putting my creamer and stuff in it, I'm not really getting the scent. It's like a medium roast. It's not all that dark. It's not all that strong. So unfortunately their coffee is not all that impressive to me either. I'm sorry. I had really, really high hopes for this box. And for the first couple of times I was really impressed, but then I started to notice that every single box was like almost the same. And it just kind of started to get disappointing for me. All right. And then the final touch item is this sugar scrub. It is called the Bentley. It is tart pomegranate also made by Authentic Books smells definitely very fruity, very tart. Um, there's only the, the tiniest bit in there. So it's probably another one time use thing. I can definitely use this in my bath tonight. That is different. I haven't gotten a sugar scrub in there before, so I will definitely get my use out of this one. And then finally talking about the book, Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. Again, this was an anticipated release for me for 2023. So I'm glad that this was a selection that I could choose from. I'm glad to have this. This was also a book of the month selection for February, but because I already had this on order with Authentic, I didn't choose it for book of the month. So this is kind of a contemporary, it's almost kind of like a second chance what would happen if you walked in someone else's shoes type scenario? Nisha Cantor and Sam Kemp are two very different women. Nisha lived the globetrotting life of the seriously wealthy until her husband inexplicably announced he wanted a divorce and cut her off entirely. Nisha is glamorous, fearless, and determined to hang on to the life she has created for herself. But in the meantime, she must scramble to adjust to an entirely new landscape. She doesn't even have the shoes she was until a moment ago standing in. That's because Sam, at the bleakest point of her life, has accidentally taken Nisha's gym bag. But Sam hardly has time to worry about something as petty as a lost bag. She's struggling to keep herself, her out-of-work husband, and her sarcastic teenage daughter afloat. When she tries on Nisha's six inch high Louboutin red crocodile shoes for a series of important meetings, the unexpected results give her a jolt of confidence that makes her realize something must change and that thing is herself. When the two women finally meet, they will discover that each needs the other to put right the wrongs that have been done to them and to the women around them from Nisha's enterprising colleague Jasmine to Sam's steadfast best friend Andrea. So this definitely sounds like a very sweet heartwarming type contemporary about second chances, kind of finding who you are, righting some wrongs, and I am here for it. So I'm glad to have this one on my shelves. And then of course we have the booklet that comes with it. It tells you what was in your box as well as what could have been in your box depending on what type of box you get. For example, if I had chosen the cocktail box, I would have gotten Parch Prickly Paloma, which is a cocktail mix, or I could have gotten Hamstead Tea. It's a rooibos tea. If I have the highest level of subscription, I would have also gotten a Nutty Milk Chocolate Cinnamon Bar from Moonstruck Chocolate Company, or also Women's Nevertheless She Persisted Socks from Crazy Dog T-Shirts. So that is the booklet. All right, now on to Book of the Month and Aardvark. So starting with Book of the Month, these were the selections that they had for March. They had The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. That is actually one that I mentioned on my channel recently. From the author of The Lost Apothecary, a gothic fable teeming with mystery and occult forces where none can be trusted. They have Wayward by Amelia Hart, which is magical realism. Ode to the natural world and female power. This lush generation spanning novel is equal parts daring and inspiring. They have The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth, which was an early release thriller. When an old acquaintance dies, it dredges up demons of the past that threatened to unravel a seemingly perfect marriage. That is definitely a domestic sounding thriller. The Last Russian Doll by Kristen Loish, which is an historical fiction. This epic story weaves one family's tragic splintering into the larger tapestry of Russia's turbulent 20th century. They have Rootless, which is a contemporary fiction by Crystal Zara Apia. An unexpected pregnancy pushes a married couple into a raw and emotional exploration of what it is they truly want. They have The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, a fantasy by Shannon Chakraborty. This swashbuckling pirate captain's last hurrah will have you clutching for your spyglass ready to hit the high seas. And then we actually have a horror as the final one. It is The Lone Women by Victor Laval. In this disquieting story, a woman fleeing past sins attempts to forge a new life homesteading Montana's harsh plains. Since I almost always go for the thriller options at Book of the Month, that's one of the reasons why I have Book of the Month is because they pretty much always recommend very solid thrillers. I usually really enjoy the thrillers that they recommend or make for their monthly selections. So I went ahead and chose Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I have never read anything by Sally Hepworth before. At this point, I think she is a pretty popular suspense thriller author, but none of her past work has intrigued me because some of her past work seems to include tropes I don't necessarily love, like the crazy mother-in-law. And so I was kind of hesitant to pick up something by her. This actually sounds kind of interesting and I want to give her a shot. And like I said, I usually gravitate towards the thriller options for book of the month. And this was the only one for March. So my understanding of this is that it follows a married couple and they kind of have the perfect marriage. They have their perfect little dream house that is overseeing this cliff. But this cliff has actually become a really popular spot for people to go and commit suicide. So our couple 
couple, Pippa and Gabe, Gabe kind of goes out there night after night trying to prevent people from taking their lives. But one night he doesn't. One night he goes out there to supposedly talk a woman off the cliff, but he's not successful and the woman jumps to her death. And then Pippa finds out that Gabe actually knew this woman and it kind of leads her to question, did he really try to talk her off the ledge? Did he push her off the ledge? Like what is going on? Does she really know her husband as well as she thinks she does? That is really intriguing. I'm interested to see what Sally Hepworth is able to do with this story. I'm going to give her a chance and if I enjoy this, I will definitely be looking into more of her backlist to see if any of those work for me as well. So I went ahead and caved and got Wayward by Amelia Hart. This is the magical realism. I don't always do well with magical realism. I kind of always need it to either be grounded fully in reality or be fully fantasy. But this says 2019 under cover of darkness Kate flees London for ramshackle wayward cottage inherited from a great aunt she barely remembers. With its tumbling ivy and overgrown garden the cottage is worlds away from the abusive partner who tormented Kate. But she soon suspects that her great aunt had a secret. One that lurks in the bones of the cottage hidden ever since the witch hunts of the 17th century. 1619 Alpha is awaiting trial for the murder of a local farmer who was stampeded to death by his herd. When Alpha was a girl her mother taught her their magic. A kind not rooted in spell casting but in deep knowledge of the natural world. But unusual women have always been deemed dangerous and as the evidence of witchcraft is laid out against Alpha she knows it will take all of her powers to maintain her freedom. And then in 1942 as World War II rages Violet is trapped in her family's grand crumbling estate straitjacketed by societal convention. She longs for the robust education her brothers receive and for her mother long deceased who is rumored to have gone mad before her death. The only traces Violet has of her are a locket bearing the initial W and the word wayward scratched into the baseboard of her bedroom. Weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries wayward is an astonishing debut and an enthralling novel of female resistance. So it was actually the witchy nature of this that really caught my attention and made me want to grab this and so it sounds like it's going to also have some beautiful prose and it's going to weave together timelines across five centuries which I don't think I've ever actually seen done before. You have a perspective in the 1600s, the 1900s, and the 2000s and I find that really really intriguing so I have high hopes. Now in terms of add-ons, so these are books that Book of the Month specifically put on their website for add-on options. They were not included in this month's selections and they were not included in any of past month's selections. So these are literally just books if you are interested in, in them you could add them to your box once you have made your monthly selection. And I believe they had three. One is Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson, which is another release that is coming out in March. I did go over this book in the March releases video that I put out. It is a literary fiction. Brooklyn's 1% is put under the microscope in this sharp, vibrant exploration of what happens to a trust fund deferred. And then there is Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano, which is another literary fiction. This is also one that I mentioned in that new release video, and it is one that I am actually interested in enough to get. That is the book that is actually coming to me in the final Authentic Books box that I'm getting. It says, we all may contain multitudes, but sometimes it takes the help of friends and found family to see beauty in our layers. And then the final option that they had for an add-on, which is the one that was the most interesting to me and the one that I wanted to grab was, I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. It says, a successful film professor and podcaster, Bodie Kane is content to forget her past, the family tragedy that marred her adolescence, her four largely miserable years at a New Hampshire boarding school, and the murder of her former roommate, Talia Keith, in the spring of their senior year. Though the circumstances surrounding Talia's death and the conviction of the school's athletic trainer, Omar Evans, are hotly debated online, Bodhi prefers or needs to let sleeping dogs lie. So this is definitely giving me some dark academia vibes, possibly a wrongfully convicted person and a podcast element. But when the Granby School invites her back to teach a course, Bodhi is inexorably drawn to the case and its increasingly apparent flaws. In their rush to convict Omar, did the school and the police overlook other suspects? Is the real killer still out there? As she falls down the very rabbit hole she was so determined to avoid, Bodhi begins to wonder if she wasn't as much of an outsider at Granby as she thought. If perhaps back in 1995 she knew something that might have held the key to solving the case. This is actually kind of giving me a little bit of the It Girl vibes by Ruth Ware which I just recently read because it's got those dark academia themes where somebody was killed in college and somebody was convicted but that person could have been wrongfully convicted. I've never read anything by this author. I believe that she was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize at one point so I have high hopes that this is going to be amazing. All right now we're going to go ahead and get into Aardvark Book Club. I'm going to quickly go over the five books that they had for their monthly selections and I'm going to let you know what I chose. So the first book I have here is a contemporary romance. It is LGBTQ+. It is called For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. A surprise meeting called by Ari Fox, a young actress on everyone's radar, stirs up all kinds of feelings Nina thought she'd deleted for good. Then we have a literary fiction slash romance called Big Swiss by Jen Began, a brilliantly original and funny novel about a sex therapist's transcriptionist who falls in love with a client while listening to her sessions. When they accidentally meet in real life, an explosive affair ensues. Then we have a memoir called Sink by Joseph Earl Thomas, a wrenching and redemptive coming of age memoir about the difficulty of growing up in a hazardous home and the glory of finding salvation in geek culture. We have a fantasy that is also historical in nature. It is called The Magician's Daughter by H.G. Perry. In the early 1900s, a young woman is caught between two worlds in H.G. Perry's spellbinding tale of miracles, magic, and the adventure of a lifetime. And then finally, we have a suspense thriller. It is called 48 Clues into the Disappearance of My Sister by Joyce Carol Oates. It says, when a woman mysteriously vanishes, her sister must tally 
tally up the clues to discover her fate. All right, also I'm gonna be honest and say this is another situation where I didn't want absolutely any of them. Naturally, I gravitated to the suspense thriller, but after reading the synopsis and then reading a lot of the reviews that are already out about this book, it seemed like this was going to be a very mediocre middle of the road thriller and I just didn't wanna waste my time. And then most of the other books really didn't sound very interesting to me based on their synopses. So once again, I gravitated toward the book that was most likely going to be something that I could enjoy. And that is For Her Consideration, which is the sapphic LGBTQIA plus romance. It says, since a crushing breakup three years ago, Nina Rice has written romance friends, her dreams of script writing for TV and even LA proper out of her life. Instead, she's safely out in the suburbs in her aunt's condo, working her talent agency job from home, managing celebrity email accounts and certain there's plenty of writing and plot for her life. But a surprise meeting called by Ari Fox, a young actress on everyone's radar, stirs up all kinds of feelings Nina thought she'd deleted for good. Ari is sexy, out and proud and a serious control freak, according to Nina's boss. She has her own ideas about how Nina should handle her emails and about getting to know her ghostwriter. When she tells Nina she should be writing again, Nina suddenly finds it less scary to revisit her abandoned life than seriously consider that Ari is flirting with her. Between reconnecting with her old crew and working on a new script, a relationship with a movie star seems like something she'll definitely mess up. But what could be more worth the risk? So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a cute, sweet, heartwarming, heartfelt sapphic romance, and I'm here for it. This definitely satisfies a prompt for my Slayer Fest readathon, so it's definitely going on my Slayer Fest readathon TBR. And I'm hoping that I'm surprised again because February was my very first experience with Aardvark. Again, none of the selections really appealed to me at all. I'd never heard of any of the books. I'd never really heard of or read any of the authors. None of the synopsis really appealed to me, but I picked the one most likely to be something that I would enjoy. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was The Sweet Spot by Amy Popel. And I'm really hoping that this does the same exact thing. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot during Slayer Fest. And like I said, I'm going to continue to give Aardvark a try. I'm going to wait a couple more months to make my final decision on it, but I do love that there is competition out there for Book of the Month. I do love that their selections are a little bit more obscure. Like they might not be things that you have necessarily heard of. I had never heard of any of these books for the selections. So it does give you a wider array of options to choose from. And I'm going to see how I feel about this. So got this one. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are my unboxings for Authentic Books, Book of the Month, and Aardvark. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of any of these subscriptions. Let me know what you think of the books that I selected and if you've read any of them or if you are excited to read some of them like I am. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos two times a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and there's a video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye, guys. Thank you.